Hey, how's it going guys? I hope you're doing well. Today I was busy refactoring my application and I noticed myself redoing a certain thing and I thought that would make an interesting video seeing that this is a really cool tip that I can give you and especially help out web developers when it comes to styling. So you're looking at the Art Engines repo. Uh, this is a Next.js application, and I thought I'll just show you a little bit of uh, the refactors that I've been doing to this repo and this code base. Firstly, to make it clean for myself to understand it a lot better as I intend to add more features to it. If you are planning on building a large application, it's very important that you follow a good, clean folder structure or project structure so that you do not jump around not knowing where things are in your application. To me, what makes a good repo or a folder structure of an application is that you should be able to look at the folders alone and tell what the application is basically doing. Now, there's a concept in clean architecture where you can get use cases and all of that. Uh, when it comes to web development, we have context and Redux and different ways of separating the code. So what I like to do is have an interfaces folder. And so this folder would give me the core of what my application is dealing with. And here I can see I've got a collection, editor, file API, folder, generations, group, media file. Just by looking at this, I can kind of roughly tell that here we're dealing with folders, renders, generations. And so Without me knowing what this app is about, I can already see that this has to do with some generating something and rendering it with traits and options, if you know what I mean. So this is giving me a high level overview of the entities that I'm working with. And this is good because if a new developer joins your project, they don't have to go and find things. They can just simply look in your interfaces. For example, if I want to know what a media file is, I can open this folder and I can see, well, here's iMedia file. This is the interface for the entity uh, media file. We can see that there's all its fields that we're going to be using. Simultaneously, we know that in this application, it is React. Uh, after all, so we can use context. We can see that we've got a media file context uh, file interface over here. And this is fantastic because without even opening the state, the context file, we can already see what uh, methods it will implement. So we'll have its state, we'll have set files, set partial files, add file, remove file. So immediately here I can see how we interact with these media files. And I can already know that it's simply a CRUD operations, basically. We're adding and removing and, and updating files. So now that I know this, I know that the context over here, which holds the state of the media files, would implement this interface. And therefore, we would have the implementations of all these methods. And we can be assured that it would export this and provide it to our application. And so that's why I love having this interfaces folder and, and having all my interfaces sit here, because I can just from a high level understand what the application does. You know, same goes for groups and generation and, and, and so on. I realized that I might be going all over the place in this video, but trust me, it does have some value, especially if you're developing with web technologies. So just bear with me and enjoy it, right? Just sit and relax and, in, and see what I am doing with this refactor. And I'm very excited for the last tip in this video which really helps me out refine the style of the application. So just going back to the whole folder structure, uh, every project eventually you're going to have to reuse some code. And so that's why I like having a utils folder. For example, we can look at the color utils over here. Over here, I've got a generate color function. I've also got an adjust colorful theme function and a is color dark function to check if the color is light or, or dark and based on that and do some switches. Now, the rule of thumb for me when it comes to utils is really when you find yourself needing to reuse a function some way or immediately if you have a, a function that you copied over into another component, that's a big no-no and rather move that to a utils file 
until you can find a place for that, either in its own class, in a service, or what you might have. In my case, I've got these loose functions that I sometimes just need to reuse here and there, and that's when I decide to create a utilities file for that and just put it in here. So this will help you out a lot, uh, just to also uh, be more dry, right? Don't repeat yourself kind of analogy there. Of course, we have things like a styles folder to keep uh, high level styles. I use Tailwind, so my styles live closer to the components. Uh, so we'll get back to that one. Anyway, I've got services. So if something can't be a context and I still need to make use of it all over the place, but I feel like it is more closer to the business logic of the application, I do not make it a utils, but instead I make it a service. Uh, and this service, for example, the data analyzer, which you can see in the application is this section over here where we get a summary. That is quite a, a, a crucial part to the application. So I actually have an interface again, like I showed you before, if we go to generation, there it is, an interface, and this is what the interface implements, generate report. And so with those parameters given to the application here, I can do the implementation. And this works nice because now I can use it almost like a utility file, but it's, it's more suited for business use case. And if I want to interact with external things there, I can too. Then I've got a schema. Schemas are important in my application. It's just a nice way for me to put them at the top level, especially because they just JSON files usually or object and, and it's nice to have them overarching the whole project if that's their scope. If it's not, then you can nest them. Uh, then I've got public and pages. Pages are just the high level pages. What I like to do with pages, for example, here I've got the exporter page and you can see I'm defining a few components in here. So it just defines for me the structure of this page. And we can see that reflected here on the nav bar. So here I've got the studio page and then the whole exporter page. And what makes this nice is because I can immediately see what the exporter is going to have. It's going to have a collection overview, a generator, a renderer, an output, and a config switch panel. If I go to this one. I can immediately see that there's the overview, here's the generator, there's the output, there's the renderer, and there's the config switch panel. And so this is really good because you can just move them around if you need to. And this is what makes React so powerful, the fact that you can create these smaller components and piece them together. So Pages just holds that. Components is an interesting one though. When you look at, let's say, these pages, they consume components, right? And so this is something that I had to think about carefully. There's many different ways developers do these. For me, what I like to do is I like to split the code or the components into folders where they are used. So to make more sense of this, if I look at the components folder, I've got studio in my pages, I've got a studio and an exporter. And if I go into the exporter, uh, which we've just seen now here. So this is the exporter. We've got the collection overview, config, generator, renderer, and so forth. And uh, if we see here, there's the generator and there's all the code that goes with the generator uh, or the components at least. We've got output, overview, renderer, and so on. Simultaneously, if we find that we need to reuse a component in these other components, and then I just simply put it in shared. A config switch panel is one that gets used all over the place and it works with dynamic configuration. So that's why it has its own folder inside of shared. And so you can logically make these decisions for yourself where you need to put it. However, it does make sense for me uh, to put it closer to where it is used. I have started refactoring things more in studio. So you will see in my studio page over here, I've got a few dynamic switches that happens just based on the editor and if something is expanded or not. However, if I look in the studio component folder, I can very easily see, well, there's the X Explorer panel. And so the Explorer panel is divided in quite a few different bits. And I feel like this is what inspired me to make this video. So 
I was ba basically busy refactoring this Explorer panel over here, the one that holds all these folders. And uh, I started finding it very difficult to know where the limits or the bounds of certain components were. Uh, this was before my refactor. And when I say refactor, what I mean is I already have the code here. So if we look at a component that's not yet refactored, it is this image, image preview. This has not been refactored at all and is in a very ugly state in my opinion. When I say ugly, the component is basically 200 lines of code, right? 200 plus. And this makes it, it works, everything works and it is written in a nice way, but it's a huge file. And for me to quickly go and observe something, that's simply not gonna work, right? So then what I would do is I would extract this into smaller components. And this is what I've done with the Explorer panel. So the Explorer panel was huge, huge at, at first, but now I can go to the Explorer panel and I can see that it's handling some scrolling and here is the panel. And so now I've refactored this and split out the header, right? And so if we look at the Explorer, this part over here is the header. And if we go back to the code, we can see that I've got the collection, Explorer collection. And so again, this is much more tiny and, and manageable, right? And so that part is this. Now, as I was refactoring and trying to split out these components, it was difficult for me to find the bounds simply because I coded this a long time ago. So what I then did was I made a small kind of a styles util file. So in my styles, and this is something you can try, it really does help. In my global CSS, I simply have a small style over here and I call it test. And I give it a background color of green or whatever you want to do and a border. The border is important because sometimes you've got different styles that you, can, you can't see without a border. And I just switch them to important. So now that I have this class, what I could do was I could physically go, let's go into the panel itself. And I could just attach the class here at the end. And so if I save this and I go back, I could see that this is where the bounds are for this panel. And this made it very easy for me to then go and extract certain things. Now, of course, this is the top level component, but if I wanted to extract this header part, I could undo that, go to the header. And remember before this was all one file. So I could do this and I could see exactly where those bounds are. What makes this approach of styling components beautiful for me is that you can actually see the padding and which components actually affect that padding and the margins and so on. So that is really, really cool. So I thought this is an interesting tip to show. And I believe I've shown this before in my videos before, but really when I started refactoring this application and I found this useful, I thought this is something we need to revisit. The same goes with a folder. If we wanted to see a cool ways, the ways the folders bounds, we can just simply add this here go back, we can see each one of these is a folder. And so we can now nicely go and split them out into components. So in fact, uh, after the refactor, this big panel is a component, the header is a component, this collection thing is a component, each folder is a component, and I've even gone as far as to make the details a component as well of each folder. So for example, if I go in here, there's the folder header. And so I can just attach those here back. You can see even the top part of the folder over here is the header. And I've split out the folder actions, which is basically this component with these items. So if I wanna go and just make this a div, put this on there. And so if I wanna see, see this, then I can basically go ahead and see that there's a tiny little dot and that is just to show when you click on it, you can see the dustbin icon pop up. And uh, this was very useful, like I said to me, to, to start refactoring this application. It became very evident where things are. And as a result, I can split out this entire structure like this. And what makes it even better is that if I find that there's now something that I can reuse, 
I go and put it in my shared folder. But most likely some of the stuff are so custom to the panel itself that it stays in here. So the next thing that I'm about to do is refactor the preview section, which I've got this beautiful preview switch, right? This panel, which switches based on based on the on the preview that you are on. For example, if I go to the studio and I close this, I can see that there's this preview, right? So my way I go about this now is to identify the areas that I need to extract. And so I already extracted this header part and now this is just the preview for me to switch in different things. So for example, if I have a 3D preview, uh, later on if I have a video preview, I can do that. But I would go in here and I would go and look through this file and I would go and find things and I would go and say, aha, so this row, what is this all about? What is this exactly doing? Attach, attach my test and I can see that this is this top part. And so if it makes sense for me to extract this into its own component, then I would simply say, all right, grab this, move it to its own component, look at what dependencies and properties it will need, and then I'll just simply do that move. And so this really helped me to now start refactoring the component into a small bits and chunks. And like I said, this will help you really keep track of what you are doing, work with your project in a nice, nice way, and as well, uh, make it scalable eventually, right? Because now I can immediately see where things are without me having to struggle. If I know I need to go to a certain section in the application, uh, just for example, if we go here and I see uh, there's something in this output, maybe the status, isn't working, I can immediately go to components. I know that is in the exporter section. I can go to output, go to output, find that piece. And if output is even more refactored, I just go to that sub component. So I hope that makes sense. And I hope this is kind of valuable for you guys. The rest of the stuff is now pretty straightforward. My interfaces, my context over here, overarching the projects, implementing my interfaces. I've got high level config over here and the components. And so that is how simple and straightforward I like doing these projects with, right? And so I thought it was a very uh, cool thing to be able to show you how you can get to a styling or, or a, a position where you can style uh, your components in a nice way and, and separate them from uh, your bulk big components because at the end of the day, uh, trust me, when you have coded something four months, five months, maybe a year ago, and you get back to it, you are going to forget what that thing did just simply because we work on a lot of things all the time. And so I think this is hopefully going to help a lot of you out there. A bit of a random video, I have to say, because I'm busy refactoring. However, I am going to start doing more of these conversational piece videos. You'll see me a lot on camera where I talk about my experiences as a developer, how to grow yourself as a, as a, a dev in the web space and how to elevate your skills, right? And the things I do on a daily basis, because this is a channel for education. And I think that through my experiences, I might help one or two of you out there find a good way or a good approach of doing something or solving uh, problem. Anyways, I hope you had a fantastic time with me in this little video. I hope it wasn't too boring and very interesting at least. I am busy refactoring this app. For me, it's very fun to work on it. Um, and my next video, I'm going to discuss on how important it is to also have a side project. Even if you are busy working a full-time job, how important a side project actually is to uphold those skills that you have as a dev developer. So click with this channel for that video, put on that bell notification to see it come out and also give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Cheers for now.